Welcome to Asian at Home in our new kitchen in the new house, new area. This is a brand new Asian at Home. I'm super excited. Today I'm going to show you how to make kimchi, which is most popular, common, and most famous Korean dish. Kimchi is super easy to make, I'm not gonna lie, but it is time consuming, so that is where it comes very hard to make because it takes full day to one and a half day. But it's totally worth it. Let's get started. So the first we need salt the Napa cabbage. For this recipe, you will need three large Napa cabbages cut in a half and quartered. With the quartered cabbages with cold water in your sink or a large basin. In another your sink or large size basin, add 24 cups of water and 2 and 4 cups of sea salt and stir with your hand or spoon to let salt dissolve into water completely. Grab a quartered cabbage and sprinkle with sea salt every layer of cabbage leaves, a small pinch at a time. Make sure most of salt to be on stem part. Repeat until all the cabbages are done. You will need 3 quarter cups of sea salt to sprinkle on, on the cabbage. And if you run out quickly, then add a tablespoon at a time. Pour salted water over the cabbage. Salt down cabbage about 7 to 9 hours. And I really think this is slow process makes huge difference at the end of the kimchi taste. Rotate the cabbage to salt evenly once or twice total process. Check the cabbage if it's salted enough and ready to raise by bending the thick stem part. If it snaps, it's not ready. So soak more. If it bends nice and smoothly, then it's ready to rinse. Rinse with cold water at least three times thoroughly and place in a large strainer and drain about an hour before fill up with kimchi filling. It's been draining about, I think about 30 minutes, so another 30 minutes and it go and drain more. Oops, let me put it down. And while my cabbage is still draining, I'm going to make kimchi paste and all the fillings. This is sweet rice flour porridge, which is, this is magic ingredients in kimchi makes it fermented proper way. Very important and make sure you follow this direction. In a small saucepan, add water, dried seaweed, tashima or kombu we call, dried polak, dried fish, dried shiitake mushroom. Bring it to boil over high heat, then reduce the heat to medium low and simmer for five minutes. Remove from heat and take solid ingredients out. Check if the broth is 2 cups. If it's less, add water to make 2 cups. Return to heat, add rice flour and whisk. Bring it to soft boil over medium high heat and keep whisking about 2 minutes. Don't worry about the clumps because it will all cook down and we are going to blend later on. Remove from heat and cool completely. And this right here is cool completely rice porridge. And I'm going to put it into the blender. This one already smells fantastic. Okay, here we need fish sauce. I really like this bread right here. Three cracks. But you can use different fish sauce, it really doesn't matter. But just make sure it's a good quality fish sauce. Alright? You will need one and a quarter cup of fish sauce. And for another seasoning part, we will need this Korean sauteed shrimp. This is a little baby shrimp and they sauteed and fermented. It's super stinky, super yummy. Three tablespoons of sauteed shrimp. For all that savory goodness, we will need a little sweet balance. So one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of the sea salt. It's local sea salt, San Francisco sea salt. One tablespoon as well. So in here, I'm going to add all the vegetables that I want to add as a sauce, which is five red chilies. This is optional because if you really like spicy kimchi like myself, then just add in. If you don't, you, don't, you can just skip it. 
just broccoli chop because we can just blend in everything that I don't know. And I really love this freshness, like a fresh spiciness from the fresh chili in my kimchi. And a half of a large onion. Just gonna powder it. So it will blend easily. And a one apple. Yes, it's gonna be like give really natural sweetness and uh, cool refreshing kind of uh, flavor into the sauce. You will need one fuzzy apple or any type of apple. Add it into the blender. Some garlic! Oh yeah! Don't forget garlic when you're cooking Korean food, okay? You will need 25 cloves of garlic and take this little brown stem part put it all in the mixer and you will need some ginger just going to peel it roughly I'm not going to peel completely or perfection you can just kind of you know scrape it scrape scrape you can do it with a spoon which is a more safe way than I'm doing with a knife but I don't care because I'm professional slice Two, three, four, five, six. Six slices. This is it. Kimchi paste. Ready to go. Blend. Close the lid. Pour all your this kimchi paste sauce in your basin. See how smooth they are? There's no chunks. And in here, finally, we are going to add gochugaru. So I'm using 3 cups of gochugaru. This is what gives a super bright and beautiful and red color to kimchi. I know we have a little red color here from the red chili, but this is the main key for the color. So if it's brown, you probably don't want to use it because it's all spoiled and it won't give any color to any food. So you want to make sure it's a bright red, beautiful color. All add in. Kimchi paste is ready! Taste it, if you like it. Is it salty enough? Is it sweet enough? Is it garlic enough? Is it onion enough? Is it all perfect and balanced? Oh yeah, of course, because I made it. If you follow my recipe, you will get this too, alright? So, let's prepare the vegetables. Korean radish, it's mu, we call mu, it's um basic ingredients to get the kimchi as well as the green onions um, but if you cannot find this you can use a um, Japanese daikon uh, which is works fine but Japanese daikon is not as sweet or crispy as Korean one so try to looking for this but second choice will be Japanese daikon wash it thoroughly and they will still have this brown spot you can just um, peel it with the peeler or you can do like I do like how my mom taught me you just scrape it with your knife just dirty part you don't have to peel it all the way mix it up real quick you can slice with your hand obviously but Walmart mandarin really helps me out make my job easy and quick so add it in two kimchi paste you need a bunch of uh, green onion about six to eight green onions is really depending on the size i'm using eight green onions i'm just gonna cut off the roof roof root and just cut in half in a leaf wise cut into about two inch long add into kimchi sauce if you want to, you can add some more other uh, authentic vegetables like I'm about to add this uh, garlic chai Korean mustard is really good or water parsley, we call minari is amazing in this kimchi as well The chai cut into about 2 inch long Kimchi paste and all the vegetables are ready to go Take all this out from my spoon Mix with your hand Ready? This right here is a two and two and a half gallon 
size of bag, you see how large it is. Ziploc bag will prevent all the colors and smell from itchy. Gets way too strong in your refrigerator or into the container. You wanna use it, trust me. One cabbage out, they will be draining about an hour. Every single layer we're going to fill up with this filling. Grab the cabbage head like so, which are one left hand if you're right handed. Left hand, grab a kimchi paste, which are right hand like so. And lay down the first layer of cabbage and just brush it like this. And whatever vegetables wanna live in there, let it be. Just let them be naturally get married. My mom used to tell me, that's not the right amount. You put too much. So I put less. Like, oh, you put too less. I'm like, mom, what do you want? <laughs> She's like, like this, like this, a perfect amount. Ta da! Kimchi. Oh. Like a little baby. Mwah. Put it into the Ziploc bag that we prepared earlier. You keep repeat until you're done with the filling and the cabbage. So alright, I'm done packing my kimchi to my zipper bag and to my container. Double bag. And just like this, on your counter, room temperature, or if it's winter, it's really cold, put it just in your garage or just outside the balcony if you have so. And put it about to 24 hours to 48 hours. You have to ferment it for one or two days. So it's really depending on how you like your kimchi. If you like really well fermented, like the sour kimchi, then I recommend two to three days. Actually, sometimes up to three days because I love, love, love sour kimchi. But if you prefer not so much fermented and then not too sour, just to put it outside just one day and it's good enough. This is what it looks like after a week. I put in the room capture for two days and been in the refrigerator for a week. And this one I made with Korean mustard instead of a chai, which is I really really love. Cut it about one and a half to two inch long. The fermented it's like a week old, but the cabbage is too crunch. my kimchi recipe right here and subscribe my channel for more inspirations and idea of Asian home cooking thank you so much for watching me today and remember you can always cook Asian food at your house making it easy and fun I'm Sanyang Longast and this is Asian at home and I'll see you next time bye